Hey guys, you know the plans that we think are going to happen are not necessarily the plans that God knows are going to happen. Just this morning I found out that the uh, mission trip we had planned to Costa Rica has been canceled and we're heartbroken about that. And maybe you've had something that's been canceled or that you anticipate will be canceled. In all of the disruptions of our plans, there's no reason to think that the will of God is not going to continue to unfold. In Proverbs 16 and verse 3, it says, Commit your work to the Lord and your plans will be established. The people of God are supposed to be those who are all in. At every point and in every way in our lives, we invite the will of God in. That's all that we care about. We make plans and we try to be good stewards, but we don't know the future. But, but God does, and God unfolds his will. And even though there are times like now when things don't go the way that we think they're going to go. We can be confident that the will of God is going to unfold. That happened with Paul all the time. In the book of Acts, we find a, a, quite a bit of a historical record of things that he went through that he didn't have any idea were going to happen. He didn't know the future. But God knew they were going to happen. You see, Paul was somebody who was all in, totally, 100%. He invited the will of God into his life, and that's all he cared about. That's all he wanted. And so God unfolded his will in the life of Paul. It didn't mean that everything that Paul planned happened the way he wanted. You look at the end of Acts chapter 14, he gets back from his first missionary journey. And if you kind of peek ahead the end of chapter 15, you know that he wants to go back and visit the people that he met, the churches he established, the people that became Christians, people he preached the gospel to, he wanted to go back and see all of those from the first missionary journey. That's what his plan was. But then, out of nowhere, chapter 15, you have some people that are coming and teaching things about the law of Moses to Christians that they shouldn't be teaching. And so he ends up going from Antioch to Jerusalem to have what we call the Jerusalem Council. And after all that said and done, he is with Barnabas, and uh, he says, I want to go back and visit the people that we met on this first missionary journey. <clears throat> and he ends up having a falling out with Barnabas and John Marks, and he splits up with them. Now, he wasn't, he wasn't planning for that to happen. He wasn't planning for the Jerusalem Council, and he wasn't planning to split up with them, but it didn't mean that God wasn't going to unfold his will in the life of Paul. We get to the beginning of chapter 16. We find that Paul meets somebody that becomes very significant. You see, Barnabas... And John Mark had departed from him, and it was just Paul and Silas. We get to chapter 16. Who joins them? Timothy. And so he's going to take Timothy, and they're going to go back through, and they're going to, to, uh, to retrace their steps of the first missionary journey. But what happens? Verses 6 through 10, what happens with Paul? The Holy Spirit intervenes, and he tells him, No, you're not going to go to Asia. You're going to go to Macedonia. Sometimes we call it the Macedonian call. And just because Paul was not going to go to a place that he had planned to go, it didn't mean that God's will was not going to unfold in his life. And so he goes across the Aegean Sea. He goes to a few cities, and one of the first cities he gets to is Philippi. And who does he meet in Philippi? None other than Lydia. Now, he wasn't planning to go there. He wasn't planning to meet her. But it was the Lord's will that he would go there and that he would meet her. You know, sometimes along the path of life that we make plans, there are times where things get disrupted. And maybe, maybe we go places we weren't expecting. Maybe we end up uh, splitting up from people that we've worked with before. And maybe, as it happened with Barnabas and John Mark, they end up coming back into Paul's life. And maybe we meet up with new people that we didn't know before. We need to be open to the idea that it's with new people that we can do great things with, like Paul did with Timothy. We need to be open to the idea of going to places we've never been before, doing things we've never done before, because it may just be that it's in those places that God has the Lydia's of our life waiting for us. You know, I moved here to South Texas. For those of you who don't know, I'm six miles from the Mexican border. I moved here 11 years ago. I moved to a place that I'd never heard of, a thousand miles away from home. And you know why I did that? I did that because I believe firmly that in our work, 
in our personal ministries, we should not put any limits on what God has planned to do with us. Our job is to commit our work to the Lord and let him unfold the path in front of us. If you are all in and you're doing your best to plan, it may not work out the way you planned, but you can always trust that the will of God will happen in your life. Trust the Lord with that.